Hey everyone, I'm Laura Buccieri, the Director of Publicity at Copper Canyon Press, and I am coming to you live from Brooklyn. Uh, you are watching our new interview series, Line Break, which goes off the page and into the homes and minds of our beloved poets. Um, I've always had the dream of seeing, you know, more poets represented on screen, you know, talking shop, answering questions, and, you know, taking us behind the scenes of how they do what they do. Um, so in this episode, we are speaking with Tyree Day. Tyree, thank you so much for being here. How's your day going? Uh, it's, it's okay. I've been getting some work done, which is nice. Um, had a really good cup of coffee this Ooh. morning. No, it was coffee I've had before, but don't you, don't you know, like some days, like the coffee just hits you different. It was one of those days. Yes. <laughs> um, so that I, was nice. I love that. Um, I'm glad it was one of those days. Um, are, are you a person who puts like sugar or cream or anything in your coffee? It depends on really how I'm feeling. You know, if I wake up one day and I'm like, today's a black, straight black cup of coffee day. <laughs> and other days I'm like, I'm feeling a little, usually when I wake up in a good mood, I'll, I'll take a sweeter cup of coffee. I don't sleep the best. So those days where I wake up, I'm like, oh, I slept really well. I think I'll, I'll take a little cream today and sugar. I love that. I, I I wish I could be that flexible. I'm not flexible. I'm like cream poured in half, like half cream, half coffee. That's what I got to do. Um, anyway, um, I would love to, besides your coffee habits, I would love to have you introduce yourself um, to our listeners, maybe, you know, name, pronouns, where you live, most recent book you've published. Anything else you want to throw in is fine with me. Okay. Yeah, uh, my name's Tyree Day. I live in Raleigh, North Carolina. My pronouns are he, him, his. Um, I publish, this might be a little dirty. Uh, this is my second book of poems, Cardinal, uh, published in October of 2020. This is a, a little bird mark that's actually a cardinal too, which is really cool. Um, Did you make that? No. Uh, my poetry teacher Dorian Locke sent me a card it was like a Christmas card that like unfolded as a cardinal and I asked could I like take it out and use it as a bookmark so now it's a bookmark oh my god I love that you asked that <laughs> that's very yeah, sweet I, I didn't want to just I didn't want to just destroy someone's card I would feel bad about that yeah I, I, I hear that um all right, well, I would love to just get into it. Um, I kind of wanted to start at the beginning almost and kind of, I, I was wondering if we could go back to kind of when you started writing poetry. Um, and, you know, mm. I'm wondering if there was kind of one thing, whether that was, you know, like a song or a movie or a poem or a character that you kind of like identified with that pushed you or inspired you to write or was poetry just kind of something you don't draw to? Or I just would love to kind of uh, go back there, I guess. Yeah, I think, you know, I think the idea of telling a story, uh, I've always been interested in that. Uh, I think because I grew up, you know, listening, sitting on porches, listening to people gossip, right? I've always been an eavesdropper. And so I think it began there, but then as I went through life, there were certain things that, that also sparked it. Um, I think, let's see, I've always been uh, interested in stories. I think, I was thinking about this. I think Langston, uh, not Langston Hughes, uh, uh, Lauren Hill's MTV Unplugged album, I think had a big yes. uh, <laughs> influence on me being a writer. And I, and I really, and I think I can hear that, like her tone underneath my poem still today. Uh, in high school, I think it's the end of junior year, maybe, my mom bought me the collective of Langston Hughes. And I think that had a huge part on my writing. Um, and I think that was like really the first time I started really considering poetry. Before that, I was writing little short stories. Um, but that was the first time I was like, oh, I'm going to try poetry. And really, it kind of blossomed out of that. I think you, I still can hear his work underneath uh, my poems today. 
that kind of boost tone um, and syntax. Um, yeah, and it just grew from there. Went on to graduate school uh, and I put out River Hymns, which was my thesis. And now at Cardinal. Now Cardinal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What, so when, when you say you can hear kind of the, the tones mm -hmm. of, 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 of Langston, of music, you know, are, are, mm -hmm. are you talking about truly like pace and, and, and tone and rhyme and things like that? Or are you talking about content or were you, were you more drawn to the rhythm of, of, of those things? I'm curious. Uh, I'll say just because I know I'm always a, a writer of music first. I think I was drawn to the cadence first. Like I heard a similar music in the poems that I was like, you know, maybe drawn to. And then content, right? Uh, content as well. But for me, it's music first. And then, you know, I start peeking closer at the poems. Like, oh, this is, you know, these are the same kind of obsessions that I have. Mm. Po poetry is obsession. I agree with you there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think like an obsession to me is just, you know, like being curious about the same thing over and over and over and over again, right? Mm -hmm. And and I wonder though, you know, if you're, you, you at the very beginning of this, you said, I love telling stories. I loved eavesdropping. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I loved hearing how, how those stories evolved and, and, you, you, I feel like that was a big kind of, you said influence and then also music. So I'm wondering if you write music first, are you kind of layering the stories on music or how, how, how what's that process mm. like? That's a great question. I think for me, it's the music first and then I go back and figure out, oh, this language is telling this type of story. And I try to- I grow where that story seems to want to grow or dim where that story seems to want to dim and kind of trusting what the language is doing you know but it's always the music and then I go back like oh this music is saying this this part should go up here and, and it fits this way you know um story is definitely second for me okay okay well I'm curious then um, it go ahead go ahead I, I love what you said about the obsessions because I feel like that's so true like the the obsessions, we kind of dig into them and they get more complicated as we learn more about them. And also we have more questions about them, right? Because of that. But it's like, we're just trying to find new ways to talk about the same thing, right? Um, right. That's what we do over and, and over again. Yeah, and when you get more knowledge, you inherently have more questions, right? Because you mm -hmm. know more and, and you don't know so much more then, right? And I so I, that's the one thing I love about poetry is is it's mm -hmm. uh it's okay with it, it's at peace with being an art you know that that leans on obsession I think and mm -hmm. and I think I love that um but I'm curious so so you you kind of took us through you know when you started writing poetry and then kind of your your you went to school you kept writing poetry and then you know you had these two books published right so I'm curious was was that was published kind of the moment that you started to um, kind of think of yourself, maybe not call yourself, but think of yourself as a poet or, or, or was that something, has that happened yet, you know, or is that something that came up earlier? Like, what, was there that tipping point in which you're like, oh, okay, now poet? I'm, I really love that question because I don't know, I don't think I, and I think this is for a lot of people. I don't think we think about the things we just like, cause life doesn't, maybe life didn't give me time, doesn't give you time to think about it, but you're just in those things. I'm like, no, this is just, this is what I'm doing. This is the, this is what I got, you know? Um, so that's how I, that's how I think about it. Like, this is what I got. If it was math, I would be doing math right now, but this is just <laughs> what I have, you know what I mean? Um, so I don't ever think about like, oh, now this is, a, I'm a poet. I'm like, no, nah, this is, this is, uh, poetry is weird. Cause it's not, okay. The writing part of poetry isn't the job. That's like the passion that I'm like blessed to make money off of. But then like the other stuff, you know, the reading gigs, the, uh, the teaching, right. Um, 
that's the other part. But really, I'm just I'm just doing it, and this is what I got. And yep. No, I I hear that. I like though. I think that's really interesting. Thinking about like late, you know, if 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 hey, I'm a poet. Like that meaning not just the writing and not just the art, but kind of like the lifestyle almost that goes mm -hmm. with that art form. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's really. I've never thought of that before. I think that's really interesting. Um, um, so I guess is, is, I mean, maybe this is not, again, something that you have to stop and think about and maybe doesn't give you time for that. It doesn't give us time for any of this, but, but, you know, when you thought about publishing your first book, publishing your second book, kind of being mm -hmm. a poet um, as, as, a way as a lifestyle as a mm -hmm. kind of what you would spend the majority of your your day doing perhaps is it kind of how you thought it would be is it kind of how you imagined this would be did you even imagine it was there a, in like a life as a as a writer or as a poet but I, I don't think I I don't I definitely don't think I imagined this um and also you know growing up I had no example of this you know what I mean I think a lot of us especially yeah. like like you know I had no example of this um though when I was younger I don't think you know I don't really even think I thought about the future much like, and I'm thinking of like me as a child um like I thought sure. of the future much and like I know I wrote, but I didn't think of like this. Uh, also, is a profession that people, you know what I mean? Um, oh, absolutely. I didn't think about absolutely. that part. Um, and though you know, I didn't grow up wealthy, but also because of that, uh, I didn't grow up wealthy, so I didn't think about money, right? Uh, because I had no money to think about, and I think I think that's the idea in my mind, right? Um, like, I didn't know that people, I didn't need to think about the professional side of writing. I just enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I wonder though, like, are, I mean, I don't know, are you that person is seeing you, you know, for a kid in, in high school or something like that, yeah. is seeing you like that. I mean, that's wild, right? Like, is seeing you kind of the representation that you you know, didn't have of like a, a person, well, here's what a poet, here's what that's mm -hmm. like, here's what that life is like. I mean, I think that's awesome. I think that's, that's really cool. I'm also now thinking about like how much, like have I changed away from that perspective now that I'm like publishing, you know, I have two books in the world. Um, and I guess I'm thinking about, am I, is to put, I know the professional side has grown, but has it like, is it overtaking the writing? This is like in my own head. Um, oh I yeah, should... poetry is something that's kind of being asked, poets are being mm -hmm. asked to kind of respond and respond quickly the, and mm -hmm. these days, you know, as on. And I'm just curious as to like, I, 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 and they're also in terms of they're being, I don't know, sought after by perhaps larger institutions and, and media outlets and things like that. And I just wonder like, you know, you're talking about the business side of things. I just wonder how, you know, how do you, how do you hold that and still hold time for your, your writing and what you mm -hmm. want and just res what you are being asked to respond to, which seems very constant. Um. You know, I, I, I'm not a poet that will respond to something right, right when it happens. Um, um, I'm, you know, I need time to process. Um, that's really how I, I work. Um, and I don't know. Also, I don't, to be honest, I'm not one of those poets that are asked to respond when right uh in that time is that also I think because they know that I don't write that way as well um that I haven't shown myself to be one of those writers that you know um that respond quickly in that way 
Um, I don't know. And also, I think it's my aesthetics. I think people know my aesthetics too, that I am a poet that's exploring memory. So I do write on, I think it's memory that in a way still echo, echoes what's going on presently, right? I, that's what I think about Cardinal. The Cardinal's about, you know, the past. It's also very much about now. Um, oh, yeah. But but also, yeah, but that's not like, it's not, I don't know, it's not in your, it's not, it's because it's done in the past, right? It might not be considered right the now, though it is. I know, I, that's, that's very, yeah, that's very well said. I feel like that we're we're publishing a, a June Jordan uh, book mm -hmm. in the spring, and and I was just reading some of her poems the other day, and I was just like, those those could have been written yesterday, mm -hmm. you know, even though they're 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 they were written, you know, in a different decade. I mean, it's it's crazy um, to think of that cyclical that, that nature, you know. Go ahead. And I think that's like, you know, that's what makes a good poem that, right, when you pull it out years from now, you know, that action feels like it's still happening on the page. And... Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel like you have those TV shows that were, you know, like, whatever, in the 60s or 70s, and some of them still hold, hold up, and you're like, oh, man, that that legitimately describes my experience, you know, yesterday, and others are just, like, just so dated, um, but I feel like you're right, the, so the good yeah. poems, yeah, they, they hold, they hold true. Um, well, speaking of amazing and good and beautiful poems, would you mind reading us a poem from that you wrote either doesn't have to be from your book but one of your poems and then maybe oh uh, yeah a shout um, out or, or reading your book uh from a book that you're into these i will i will shout out uh these two books that i really enjoy and keep coming back to and then i'll maybe read a new poem i would Is that love okay? that okay okay great um let me first Okay, uh, so the first book, uh, I hope I'm pronouncing her name right, Hafiza Gitta, Un-American. I, I really, really, <laughs> this book is so good, yeah. Um, just really well done. I also just love how the book is put together and how we move through time. Uh, also, Layla Shetty's book, Deluge, which is such a really great book. Um, yeah, um, she's amazing. Uh, the world building and like myth making in this book is like, yeah. Um, so those are two books I've really been enjoying lately. And, and I'll read you some new poems, um, a new poem. So I'll say I've been really interested in thinking about like the, the interconnectivity of a neighborhood, this being like a Southern black neighborhood um, and how, you know, what happens in one house affects a house three doors down and uh, kind of, I don't know how they all depend on each other. I think that's enough, okay. Um, I'll, I'll read this poem. Uh, this poem is titled, Pantoum for Vicky. A harvest song in Vicky's heart won't let her sleep. So Vicky wakes us singing past sundown before her, oldest, before her older sister Betty can come get her out the middle of the street. Vicky wakes us singing after sundown's past. Vicky sings while mama says we're supposed to be quiet. Betty's called to pull Vicky hollering a song in the street before the police come over the dead field hill. Vicky sings while mama says we're supposed to be hush quiet and Vicky's sleep is a moon with her mama's face. Before the police come over Ancestor Hill, daddy tests a rifle upright in the closet. Vicky sleeps seeing her mama's face filled with moon. 
She said she saw three horses on Ancestor Hill. Daddy tested the rifle three more times, then laid it upright in the closet. The next day, the church people came to Vicky's door to complain. Vicky spoke to them of three horses on our dead field hill, said what she saw was no different than their grandmamas wanting to go to heaven. The church people turned away from Vicky to Jesus to complain. It was claimed Vicky danced in the world constructed by the dead. She promised it was no different than your grandmamas wanting to go to heaven. She ate snake berries, drank old Moe's conquered wine, then danced in the world assembled by the dead. Everyone knew death slept in River King. There Vicky ate snake berries, drank country wine, sung a harvest song stuck in her heart while death slept in the cane. Betty saw Vicky and asked, could she come too? Thank you so much. That's Thank you. Mean, talk about narrative. That's amazing. That's a that's a narrative. But there's also music, the repetition and that is mm. phenomenal. Um well thank you so much for being, you know, a guest and taking to do this and reading us a new poem. Um I really just appreciate it um so much. Thank you so much for having me. It's a good way to spend my day. Of course. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Uh, check back uh, on coppercanyonpress.org for all of our other episodes and more info about uh, Tyree and Cardinal. Um, and thank you all so much. And I hope you stay well.